Hello everyone. Today we're going to discuss the importance of adopting source control to store and keep track of your metadata in your Salesforce projects. My name is Alba Rivas. I am a developer advocate here at Salesforce and I'm going to guide you through this topic. Before we begin, I want to remind you that this is the second video of the DevOps Essentials series. In this series, we cover the most important concepts that will help you design and implement DevOps best practices in your Salesforce projects. If you haven't watched the first video, make sure to do so. Let's start by defining what source control is. Source control is the practice of storing and tracking changes to code in a source control repository or repo for short. Source control allows you to view the history of changes and revert to previous versions if necessary. Source control also helps you manage conflicts. For instance, when there are multiple developers working together on the same project. And it also facilitates code reviews. Source control also helps with continuous integration automations. And that is why source control is considered a general best practice. Git is the most widely adopted version control system, a distributed one. When you store something in Git, it means that there is a remote repository somewhere to which you push your changes. There are several Git hosting services available, such as GitHub, GitLab, or Bitbucket, among other ones. In this series, we will use GitHub as our hosting service. Creating Git reports is easy. To create a Git repo on GitHub, you click on New and give it a name. Then you can start adding files to it. To start, we'll create a file directly in the GitHub UI. There you have. By default, a main branch is created. Branches in Git are independent lines of development that store different versions of your code. Typically, you will push your files from your local machine. Let's do that. First, we clone the repository in our local file system using the git clone command. Once the repository is cloned, we navigate to the repository directory and we see that the file we just created is there. Next, we create another sample file. And we will use the git add command to add the file to the staging area. Next, it's time to commit the changes to our local git repository. We use the git commit command followed by the minus n flag. This way we provide a descriptive commit message that will help understanding the history of the repository later on. Finally, we push the local repository changes to the remote git repository by using the git push command. There we have the file. If you don't like typing commands, it's worth mentioning that there are desktop applications and extensions available that allow you to perform Git operations with clicks. So source control is great for storing code, but what about your org's customizations? Luckily, source control can help with that too. Your org's customizations or metadata can be stored in the form of files, typically XML files, but also following other formats, and can become part of your source-controlled code. 
For instance, this is a realistic repository in which we have the metadata files for your applications, your classes, your layouts, and more. To find a comprehensive list of the metadata types that are available in your org, take a look at the metadata coverage report. So you have your org and you need to retrieve your metadata from there to the file system. So we can commit and push those changes to the version control system. How do you do that? The answer to that is thanks to the Salesforce CLI. The Salesforce CLI is a command line interface tool that allows developers to authorize with their orgs and retrieve or deploy metadata among many other great features that are available in the CLI. Branches allow you to maintain different versions of your code that evolve independently. So for instance, I could use the main branch to store the metadata that my production or has and have a different branch to represent the metadata of my staging environment. If two branches have the same origin, they can be merged together. In our example, if we created staging from our main branch, we can merge staging changes into main at any point in time. This is the recommended way to move metadata between environments and is 100% based in source control. Spoiler alert, DevOps Center is a click-based UI that allows you to move changes between environments through source control without having to manage all that yourself. We will demo DevOps Center during this series. So how many branches should you create? The number of branches that you create and how you work with them is defined by your Git branching strategy. Your Git branching strategy will be heavily influenced by your pipeline and it will depend on your specific project needs. In the first video of this series, we decided to use this example pipeline. The Git branching strategy that we are going to use is the one that follows. We will create one branch per environment in our pipeline. We're going to have one for integration, another one for UAT, and another one for staging. And the branches are going to represent the version of the code that we have in the different environments. Additionally, we will create one branch by feature to be developed. By having independent uh, branches for development, we isolate metadata changes and we make the change management process much more agile. This is a best practice. By the way, this is the Git branching model used by DevOps Center. Please note that this Git branching strategy was just an example. You should define yours according to your pipeline and project needs. Something to bear in mind is that it is a best practice to define the pipeline and Git branching strategy before starting with the project as changing it later can be a little bit complex. Source control provides additional benefits as well. One of them is conflict detection. When you want to merge one branch into another one, you create a pull request or merge requests. That way, you're able to detect if there are any conflicts for the merge because another developer merged something before you into the target branch. Also, pull requests enable code reviews. This means that other developers can review the changes that you are trying to merge and add comments for better training and learning. Um, additionally, 
pull requests enable continuous integration automated processes. It means that you can implement checks that needs to pass before a branch can be merged into another one. This could be text execution, linting of your code, code coverage calculation, and much more. That's all for today. In this quick take, you saw how source control can be helpful to maintain a history of changes, be able to revert back to previous versions when needed, help with conflict detection and facilitate code reviews and continuous integration automations. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video if you found it helpful. Also, check out the complete playlist of developer quick takes to learn about tools and resources to supercharge your developer skills. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for the following videos of this series. Bye bye.